something else I use a lot is just a cheap kitchen knife that you can get at the grocery store. They sell these at the clay store too. Um, some people will file this edge down so that it doesn't cut you while you're working with it. It's nice for cutting through a piece when you decide you need to take the top off of something you can get around with this sharp edge. It's really, really nice. And it's short and it's nimble. Uh, we have felling tools that we get with our basic clay supply, supply set, but it's not quite as nimble as this is. For, you can smooth out your coils with it, you can scrape things down, carve little bits of detail, hack, slice, whatever you need to, and it gets in all the great little spots that are a little harder to get with this. So, Another thing that I've discovered along the way by taking classes with people is a cheap kitchen fork. This one happens to be plastic. You can use a metal one. So I've seen some people with some beautiful antique ones that they pick up along the way. Um, with our clay supplies, we get these scrapers. And when we slip and score, we scrape lines into the clay to give it some texture, get it all wet first, scrape down. And it's like little teeth that form a zipper to hold everything, but you know, these aren't really all that deep. And especially if you're working with a sculpture, you really want to have a good bond between the coils of clay that you're piling around. And this fork is a fast way to really get some deep marks in the clay. So I'll show you what to do with this later. Another thing I really like is these. These little metal ribs, the thing is, you have to be really careful when you use these because if you try to wipe the clay off, I've seen a lot of people slice their finger open with these. So it's always best to grab this way and pull the clay off and get it down in your bucket. What I actually find that I do a lot is I'll take this tool, scrape it on the side of my bucket when it gets kind of dunked up because I'm using a clay with a lot of sand and grog in it and it gets really crusty really fast. So my hands crust up and my tools crust up and then I can't get any definition in my work. And then the other thing I find is as this clay starts building up on this edge, it starts leaving weird marks in my clay that I don't want. I usually want a smooth edge with this. So scraping my tools down as I'm working helps a lot. I also really like these rubber ribs and you can smooth your clay a lot with this very easily, very quickly. Um, they're very flexible and you don't have to worry about cutting yourself and it's nice to scrape this edge down too Maybe you want to keep a wet rag with you and constantly wipe your hands off on the rag and your tools too It's a good idea to have that with you. So you're not always running back and forth to the sink I find a wet rag really works well because it grabs all the clay off your hands It's just it's a good way to get it off The other thing I like to use is these Sometimes in some spots, my clay will start to get a little bit too thick. And as I'm working around the sculpture, I'm adding clay a lot. And then sometimes I need to scrape some back away, whether it's on the inside of the sculpture or from the outside. And these little tools help a lot, especially from the inside. Like maybe there's a part of the foot that I had to keep adding some from on the outside. We don't want it to get so thick that your clay is no longer consistent thickness-wise as you go up. You want it to be fairly consistent. That minimizes cracks and stress during firing. Um, so if you scrape from the inside and scoop from the inside, this is, this is the thing to have. So, and this comes with a basic tool set. And you can get some of the smaller ones like this, which is really helpful to have. And that's good for like inside of a hand or whatever you need. Um, Another thing that's helpful, and this is speaking more to just figure sculpture, um, another thing that I like to do is download images off the internet. You can Google whatever type of figure models you want and come up with all sorts of different poses and you just print them out in groups maybe that, that would apply to what you're looking at. It gives me just some ideas of the mood of the piece, where it's tilting, um, proportions, that sort of thing. So you can find just about anything you want on the internet. You have to be careful with how you enter in your searches because it might take you to a website that you don't want to go to. But, I mean, if you enter in something that sounds professional, like 
figure model poses, that sort of thing, or crouched, nude, sitting, figure model, that sort of thing, you can avoid some of those scary websites that maybe you don't want to go to, especially if somebody else is around. Another thing that I've really come to love is this phone. And I have bought this at just Walmart, the cheapest mattress phone that you can get, those mattress panels that sit on top of a mattress. Um, and you just cut them up into various different sizes with some kitchen scissors. And as you're working, you can lay pieces down on top of the foam, and then you don't have to worry about them getting distorted by the table.